I have always had a thing for pocket knives. Um, anytime you see me out and about, uh, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance there's a pocket knife in my pocket. It's been that way most of my life since I was a young teenager. Probably, yeah, young teenager, maybe even when I was 11 or 12, I started carrying a, a pocket knife daily. Uh, I come by that um, naturally because my dad always had a pocket knife. You know, he's used it to pick a splinter out of my finger or to cut twine when we were tying something down in the truck bed. Um, and I was able to see firsthand how practical and useful um, a pocket knife can be. And so from a very young age, I have, have carried a pocket knife around with me. Well, anyway, I want to talk to you a little bit about that um, here today. But before I get into talking about that, there's something else I want to um, make you aware of regarding this Sunday. Um, the last couple of weeks, you may recall, we have had um, 8.30 and 10.45 services, two services available. We're changing that, tweaking it just slightly because we decided we don't need quite as much time in between the services, you know, to sanitize and everything. Um, so our service times starting this Sunday are going to be 8.30 and 10.30, okay? And so you're going to get a text here at 6.30 today um, and it'll be conveying that uh, the website is is active now for making reservations for this coming Sunday. This past Sunday, we had close to 200 people, just under 200 people that were there. So, so uh, people are coming, but we still do have room, and we're still honoring the social distancing. But I want to encourage you to just remember, now our times are 8.30 and 10.30, Okay. Um, another thing I want to make you aware of is that um, we do have the loft available and you can make a reservation to go and sit there. Everything, uh, the signal is sent upstairs to the loft so you'll be able to uh, experience and see and hear all the same uh, stuff that people in the multi-purpose room are hearing. However, this Sunday we're not going to have the triple classroom available. Um, we got a blood drive going from 1230 till 430. Uh, there's a real need for blood, donated blood right now, and uh, so we're hosting a blood drive it, that will be honoring social distancing the way they have the table set up and all of this. But the triple classroom will not be available for any seating this Sunday because of that. All right, let me get back to, to talking about pocket knives. Pocket knives are really practical. They're useful tools to have. And uh, uh, whether it be, like I said, removing a splinter or opening a box or, or even prying open uh, the back of my watch if it, the battery needs to be replaced. Um, and I have people borrow it. People around the church office know that I've got a pocket knife, so people borrow it on occasion when they've got something that, that they need to do. It, it's, it's really practical. Um, on Sundays, I carry around uh, different uh, size knives. Uh, I call these my Sunday knives. This is um, a Swiss Army knife, and like it's got scissors as a part of it, besides a knife blade. Um, this little guy um, holds a lot of value to me. My son Josh had given me this pocket knife, and so I will always, um, you know, carry this one with meaning because of that. But during the week, if you were to stop me and and ask, you would see something very different, like this Spyderco knife. A knife, to a certain degree, is only as good as the blade material. And this is S30V steel that is on this, which is really good uh, steel. Now, that wasn't the kind of blade material I used to have years ago when I was younger, uh, but, but uh, very sharp. And then this one, this was my newest addition uh, to my knife collection. And this thing is wicked sharp. So, let's see. Now, about the time I'm doing this, you'll see that it won't work. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Um, just just slice, slice through paper. Um, and, yeah, I, at times, you know, you, you nick your finger or something or other. And, and with a knife that is as sharp as that. But, uh, uh, but you know, the sharper it is, the more practical and more useful it ends up being. All right, I say all of that 
to say this. I want to make a comparison between this and this, the Word of God. As practical as this is, and as useful for daily use, uh, so is this. As a matter of fact, if you're not familiar with it, there's a verse in the Bible that does draw that comparison. I'm not pulling it out of thin air. It's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So it says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Back at that time, a double-edged sword would have been one of the sharpest things that they had. Today, if that was being written, it probably would have said something to the effect that the word of God is sharper than a surgeon's scalpel. And boy, I know what it's like to be on the end of a surgeon's scalpel. Yeah, they, these are sharp and they, they can hurt sometimes and all, but they can... Knives can accomplish a lot of good, especially like scalpels and stuff. I mean, I've got scars down my belly on both sides of my chest, um, both sides of my neck, the back of my neck. I mean, I've had, I've had a variety of surgeries, a lot of them having to do with the cancer. But there's been, there's been other things um, over the years, other surgeries, knee surgeries and the like that I've had. And yeah, those are painful, but yet it was beneficial that I was cut because of what was ultimately being accomplished. And that's what the Word of God is. Yeah, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, but uh, it's what it accomplishes. It's beneficial. As a matter of fact, let me point out another passage of Scripture that, that really drives that home. It's Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people for every good work. So, so God's word is to equip us. It's useful. It's practical. And what I want to encourage you in regards to, I mean, I'm, I'm, when you see me, I'm going to have one of these in my pocket, okay? I mean, whether it's this or whether it's, you know, this size, um, I'm going to have something like that in my pocket. Now, whether or not you decide to do that, I mean, that's fine. You decide not to do it, that's fine. You can borrow mine if you need it, okay? But, uh, but boy, this is something I hope you don't leave laying on your end table or in the drawer of your end table or in a bookshelf at home and now, this is something you need to be getting daily use out of. God has provided it for us to equip us, to fully equip us. It's, it's useful in the way that we go about living our lives, the way we act, the way we react, you know, how we deal with certain situations, complicated situations, sensitive situations. I mean, the Bible, the wisdom that is found there is very relevant for um, our lives and, and how we go about living our lives. So I, I just want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to um, keep one of these close by, you know, whether it's here or whether it's on your phone or whatever, but keep the Word of God close by for daily use because it'll equip you to live the life that God intended you to live. All right? All right. Have a good week. I uh, hope to see you soon.